5050's legal case has been nothing but a roller coaster of emotions full of twists and turns. With the issue seemingly finally coming to an end soon, we have some brand new updates about the case that were long due. You're probably aware of Cupid's sudden success, the member's contract injunction, and the ongoing dispute between a track, the givers, and the members, with both valid and questionable accusations. It's been a mess that has gone on for far too long, and which just got another unexpected twist with Kina withdrawing her lawsuit and going back to attract. Not only that, but she also spoke out against the givers and the way that they lied to the members to get what they want. On October 19th, Kina gave an exclusive interview to Dispatch, exposing for the first time the manipulation and insane gaslighting by An Soon Gil, known as Xi'an, and the givers. According to Kina, the lawsuit that the members filed against Attract was very carefully planned by the givers. As you might remember, the injunction was filed citing non-transparent settlements and making the members work despite their health issues as reasons. To start off preparing for the lawsuit, Xi'an had made Sana send a picture of a positive COVID-19 test to the company so the members can go into quarantine for three days. This happened three days before Attract was made aware of the lawsuit, mind you. The three days of quarantine came as an excuse to cut contact with Attract and to buy time so they can file the lawsuit and move out of the group dorm. Kina claimed that the group grew doubtful of Xi'an when they filed the lawsuit, a legal action that they were convinced to initiate by Xi'an himself. He had told the members and their parents that he had strong evidence that Attract hadn't been transparent about the financial records and the earnings that the group got from Cupid, as well as the company's alleged neglect of the girl's health. Xi'an warned them that he wouldn't be able to be involved with the lawsuit publicly, but had convinced them that this was a fight that they wouldn't lose. But if you've been following this case closely, you'll know that this very strong proof never came from Xi'an's part, and the members were left to fend for themselves. What truly solidified the distrust of Xi'an among the members, particularly Kina, was when she discovered that he had falsified her signature to change the copyright percentage from Cupid from 6.5% to 0.5%. To make this worse, she found this out not from the company, but from the news. Xi'an was also accused of faking his academic background, so it became harder and harder for the members to trust him. He had tried to convince everyone that the articles and accusations about him were fake, but the damage was done. The parents became extremely furious as he was actively ruining their chances of winning in court, so they cut contact with him and continued the lawsuit on their own. Xi'an used a range of strategies to keep the members on his side. He induced anxiety and fear within the group. He also convinced them of false information, which they considered as facts, ultimately gaining their trust. The most important part was to weaken the relationship and the trust between Attract and the girls. Another way in which he kept the members under his control was by making them believe that they owed him something. Xi'an actually managed to convince the members that he was the mastermind behind their success on the Billboard charts and taking responsibility for allegedly orchestrating their high rankings. He did this by showing them the cacao messages he exchanged with his connections in the industry. This gaslighting came to a point that he was telling the members that their Billboard rankings were not a result of organic success, but were entirely prearranged by him behind the scenes. The girls being young and not aware of how the industry worked didn't doubt him for a second, seeing as all of his predictions about their Billboard rankings and charting came true. He further guilt tripped them by telling the members that he had paid for the music video for Cupid, he had also paid for their hair and makeup, and subsequently convinced them that Attract were broke and could no longer invest in them. Xi'an also hid the fact that the CEO of Attract, Jong Hong Joon, declined a buyout offer and only told the members that the CEO had refused Warner Music Korea's money. To appear more believable, Xi'an pretended to be puzzled about why Jong Hong Joon wouldn't take money from Warner, insisting that it would be advantageous for both the members and Attract. However, he left out a critical piece of information. Warner's plan was to purchase the members and the entire company to bring them under its control. This left the members confused about why the CEO would turn down the money, as they were under the impression that it was crucial for Attract's and the group's survival. This made them worry that regular promotions would be in jeopardy without this investment. Then, Xi'an gave them an ultimatum. They'd either take investments from companies like CJ and Kakao, or file for an injunction. Well, this wasn't much of a choice, as Xi'an scared them into turning down the first option by lying to their parents that any investment Attract got would become a debt for the members who would have to repay it. So basically how the lawsuit came to be was through heavy manipulation and gaslighting on Xi'an's part, who took advantage of the girls' fears of not reaching their dreams and their naivety when it came to the music industry. He drove them from Attract, convinced them that he and his company were the only ones who cared about them, and used them for his own interests without thinking of how the situation would turn out for the girls. The members and their parents thought that Attract would bring an end to the group and even bankrupt them, putting them in massive debt, so they followed the giver's instructions without thinking much. Even though the girls said that they went on with the lawsuit on their own, it's more than clear that it wouldn't have happened in the first place if it wasn't for Xi'an. Kina even admits that they 
didn't know what filing an injunction was before Xion presented it as a course of action for them to be free from Attract. But he didn't only control the members' thoughts and actions, but their parents as well. Kina's father shared a phone call in which Xion can be heard reassuring them that they would succeed in this legal dispute, which increased his influence by offering false comfort and a feeling of security to the families. After the Dispatch article, some comments allegedly made by Kina's mother surfaced, raising more questions than giving answers. In these comments, her mother allegedly alludes to the fact that Kina's father joined the lawsuit without her knowledge. She also revealed that the parents of the other members had blocked her number, maybe because Kina's mother was the one who didn't take part in the lawsuit from the beginning and had been very wary of Xion. However, after Kina's interview, it seems like the other parents were also brainwashed by Xion's lies. Additional revelations released by controversial YouTuber Yi Jin Ho showed that the parents thought that what Xion was doing was the right thing. As seen by the phone conversation that Kina's father released, Yi Jin Ho says that initially, Kina's father believed that the investments Jeon Hong Joon would secure for the girls would turn into debts that they had to repay. But then, Xion was exposed for faking his academic background, making everything go downhill. According to Yi Jin Ho, Kina and her parents have been trying since August to convince the other members to drop the lawsuit and return to Attract, but their efforts to persuade the other members were unsuccessful, leading her to return to Jeon Hong Joon by herself. Based on Yi Jin Ho's findings, the other three members have cut ties with Xion and are coordinating their social media statements with their parents. However, the strange thing is, is that the other members haven't withdrawn their lawsuits and are still accusing Attract of mistreating them, which makes things a little confusing. In Kina's interview, she never once addressed the accusations made by Attract, which is surprising, seeing as those were some very serious ones. Moreover, Kina coming back to Attract raised a lot of questions about the other members' claims against the company, but it doesn't seem like she directly opposed them either. Kina also said that the members went on with the lawsuit on their own, so does this mean that the members actually had a reason to complain about Attract? Moreover, people expected Kina to put down all the allegations made by the other members of 5050 since she joined Attract again. Logically, this would have been a smart move to turn the public even more against the three other members and paint Kina as the smart one to get away and the one to expose the apparent lies of the members, but that never happened. Kina never once mentioned the allegations, nor did she mention the fact that the other members haven't left and are still continuing to make accusations against the company. However, this isn't the most important part in this whole ordeal. It's what happened after Kina's withdrawal. Not only did the other members not withdraw their own lawsuits, but Attract ended up terminating their contracts and vowing to pursue their own legal action against them. They made the announcement on October 23rd saying that the termination happened due to the members not reflecting on their actions, which seemed to have forced Attract's hand. The company is probably suing due to the members disclosing the financial information, which is a breach of contract and caused damages to the company. This lawsuit was probably always in the plans of the company, which must be why they gave the members a chance to change their stance and come back to the company. It also could be the reason why Kina's new legal representatives advised her to go back to Attract before she ends up being sued into oblivion. While they haven't done anything as of October 23rd, this is a lost fight for the members who will most likely end up officially being blacklisted from the industry with no company risking to sign them considering their reputation. Attract's lawsuits marks the second part of this ongoing battle, but it seems like this is it for the 50-50 members. All we can do is hope that this ends soon so both parties can focus on moving on and doing what's best for them in the future. Share your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you next time. Bye guys!